Hello, everyone. My name is Jian. I'm a software engineer on the TensorFlow team. Today, my colleague Pocket and I will be talking about TensorFlow Model Optimization Toolkit. Uh, uh, model optimization means transforming your machine learning models to make them e efficient to execute. That means faster computation, as well as uh, uh, lower memory, storage, and battery uses. And it is focused on inference instead of training. And because of the above mentioned benefits, optimization can unlock use cases that are otherwise impossible. Uh, examples include speech recognition, face unlock, object detection, music recognition, and many more. Uh, the model optimization toolkit is a suite of TensorFlow and TensorFlow Lite tools that make it simple to optimize your model. Optimization is an active research area, and there are many techniques. Our goal is to prioritize the ones that are general across model architectures and across various hardware accelerators. Um, there are two major techniques in the toolkit, quantization and pruning. Quantization simulates float calculation in lower bits, and pruning forces zero in the connection. Uh, today, we are going to focus on quantization, and we'll briefly talk about pruning. Now let's take a closer look at quantization. Quantization is a general term describing technologies that reduce the numerical precision of static parameters and execute the operations in lower precision. Precision reduction means the mod makes the model smaller, and a lower precision execution makes the model faster. Now let's dig a bit more onto how we perform quantization. As a concrete example, imagine we have a tensor with a float of values. In most cases, we are wasting most of the representation space in the float number line. If we can find a linear transformation that maps the float value onto int 8, we can reduce the model size by a factor of 4. Then computations can be carried out between int 8 values, and that is where the speed up comes from. So there are two main Tech approaches to do quantization, post-training and during training. Post-training operates on an already trained model and is built on top of TensorFlow Lite Converter. During training, quantization performs additional weight fine-tuning. And since training is required, it is built on top of a TensorFlow Keras API. Different techniques uh, offer a trade-off between ease of use and model accuracy. The most easy to use technique is the dynamic range quantization which doesn't require any data. There can be some accuracy loss, but we get a two to, two to three times speed up. Uh, because floating point calculation is still needed for the activation, it's only meant to run on CPU. If we want extra speed up on CPU or want to run the model on hardware accelerators, we can use integer quantization. It runs a small set of unlabeled calibration data to collect the min-max range on activation. This removes the floating point calculation in the computer graph, so there is a speed up on CPU. But more importantly, it allows the model to run on hardware accelerators such as DSP and TPU, which are faster and more energy efficient than CPU. And if accuracy is a concern, we can use quantization aware training to fine tune the weights. It has all the benefits of integer quantization, but it requires training. Uh, now let's uh, have a op operator level breakdown on the post-training quantization. Dynamic range quantization is fully supported, and integer quantization is supported for most of the operators. The missing piece is the uh, recurrent neural network support, and that blocks use cases such as speech and language where context is needed. To unblock those use cases, we have recently added a recurrent neural network quantization and built a turnkey solution through the post-training API. Uh, RN model built with Keras 2.0 can be converted and quantized with the post-training API. This slide shows an end-to-end -end workflow in the post-training setup. We create the T TensorFlow Lite converter and load a saved RN model. We then set the post-training optimization flags and uh, provide a calibration data. After that, we are able to call the convert method to convert and quantize the model. This is the exact same API and workflow for models without RNN, so there's no API change for the end users. Let's take a look at the challenges of the RNN quantization. Uh, quantization is a lossy transformation. RNN cell has a memory state that persists across multiple timestamps, so quantization errors can accumulate in both the layer direction and the time direction. RN cell contains many calculations, and determining, determining the number of bits and the scale is a global optimization problem. 
also quantization of quantized operations are restricted by hardware capabilities that uh, some operations are not allowed on certain hardware platforms. We solved the challenge and created a quantization spec for RN. The full spec is uh, quite complicated, and this slide shows the spec by zooming into one of the LSTM gates. As mentioned, there are many calculations in one cell. To balance performance and accuracy, we keep 8-bit calculations as much as possible and only goes to higher bits when required by accuracy. As you can see from the diagram, matrix-related operations are in 8-bit, and vector-related operations are a mixture of 8-bit and 16-bits. And uh, please note, uh, the use of higher bits is only internal to the cell. The input and output act activation for RNA cell are all 8 bits. Uh, now we see the details of RNA quantization. Let's look at the accuracy and the performance. This table shows some published accuracy number on a few data set. It's a speech recognition model that consists of 10 layers of quantized LSTM. Uh, as you can see, integer quantized model has the same accuracy as the dynamic range quantized model and the accuracy loss is negligible compared with the float uh, case. Uh, also, this is a prone model, so RN quantization works with prone as well. Uh, as expected, there is a four-time model size reduction because static weights are quantized to eight bits. Uh, Performance-wise, there is a two to four times speed up on CPU and a more than 10 times speed up on DSP and TPU. So those numbers are consistent with the numbers from uh, other operators. So here are the main takeaways. TensorFlow now supports the RN LSTM quantization. It is a turnkey solution through the post-training API. It, enabled, it enables smaller, faster, and more energy efficient execution that can run on DSP and TPU. There are already production models that use the quantization. And please check the link for more details on the use cases. Uh, looking forward, uh, our next step will be to expand the quantization to other recurrent neural networks, such as the GRU and SRU. We also plan to add a quantization aware training for RNs. Now I'll hand it over to my colleague Pocket. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Um, hi, my name is Pulkit. Uh, I work on the Model Optimization Toolkit team. And let's talk about Clicker doesn't seem to be working. Oh, sorry, can we go back a slide? Uh, yes, uh, quantization aware training. Um, so quantization aware training is a training time technique for improving the accuracy of quantized models. Uh, the way it works is that we introduced some of the errors which actually happen uh, during quantized inference into the training process and that actually helps the trainer learn around these errors and get a more accurate model. Um, now, let's just try to get a sense of like why is this needed in the first place. So we know that quantized models, they uh, run in lower precision, and because of that, it's a lossy process, and that leads to an accuracy drop. And while quantized models are super fast, and we want them, but I mean, nobody wants an inaccurate model. So the goal is to kind of get the best of both worlds, and that's why we have the system. Um, to get a sense of uh, like why these losses get introduced, um, one is that we actually have a, uh, once we have quantized models, these parameters are in lower precision. So in a sense, you have more coarse information, uh, fewer buckets of information. So that's where you have like information representation loss. Uh, the other problem is that when you're actually doing these computations, then you have computation loss when you're actually adding two coarse values instead of finer buckets of values. Uh, typically during matrix multiplication type of operations, even if you're doing it at int 8, uh, you accumulate these values to int 32, and then you rescale them back to int 8. So you have like that rescaling loss. Uh, the other thing is that generally when we run these uh, quantized models during inference, um, the inference op there are various inference optimizations that get applied to the graph. And uh, because of that, uh, the training graph and the inference graph can be subtly different, which also can potentially introduce some of these errors. And how do we recover lost accuracy? Well, for a starter, uh, we try to make the training graph as similar as possible to the in inference graph to remove these subtle differences. And the other is that we actually introduce kind of these errors which actually happen during inference. So uh, the trainer learns around it and you know, machine learning does its magic. Um, 
So for example, when it comes to mimicking errors, uh, as you can see in the graph here, like you go from weights to lower precision. So let's say if your weights are in floating point, you go down to int 8, and then you go back up to floating point. So in essence, you've actually uh, mimicked what happens during inference when you're executing at lower precision. Um, then you actually do your computation, and because uh, both your inputs and your weights are at int 8, uh, and the losses have been introduced, the computation happens correctly. But then after the computation, uh, you add another uh, fake quant to kind of uh, drop back to lower precision. Um, the other thing is uh, we model the inference path. So for example, if you noticed in the previous uh, slide, uh, the, quant, the fake quant operation came after the ReLU activation. So this is one of the optimizations that happened during inference, that the ReLU gets folded in. And what we do is that when we are actually uh, constructing your graph, we make sure that these sorts of optimizations get added in. Um, and uh, let's look at the numbers. So the numbers are pretty good. Uh, so if you look at uh, the slide, we are almost as close as the float baseline uh, on like uh, various vision models that we've tried. Uh, so this is really powerful. You can actually uh, execute a model which gives you nearly as good accuracy and is quantized. Um, so what's the value to users? Well, you have uh, on the one hand a simple almost one line API that you can use, quantize your model, train it, uh, convert it, and go ahead and execute it. This works great for app developers, ML engineers, et cetera. You might want to go one step ahead, and then we have a slightly more complicated API where it's like, hey, you can kind of configure your quantization however you want, and this would be something that's uh, quite useful to ML engineers, some researchers. And if you want to go like completely uh, out there, you can actually completely configure quantization algorithms, schemes, different bits, et cetera, what you want. And and this uh, provides a very good fertile ground for researchers or hardware engineers. Um, so basically, the API is easy is easy, hard as possible. Uh, so let's look at how do we do this. So, uh, well, this is your standard uh, Keras model. If you want to, let's say, quantize your entire model, typically you, you know, construct the model, import TensorFlow STF, model.compile, model.fit, go ahead, right? Now let's look at what uh, quantizing the model looks like. Pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, import TensorFlow model optimization STF mod, that's the package you pull in, you construct your model, quantize the model, and then just go ahead. You do your compile, fit, all of that. Continue with that. Um, now, you might not want to quantize the entire model. Maybe you want to quantize a subset of your model because some parts of the model are uh, you know, uh, either most sensitive to quantization losses or you want to get the most performance out of them. So you want to quantize only a part of your model. And in that case, it's still pretty simple, just slightly different. So for example, you, know, you have uh, a quantize annotate layer. You tell it uh, which layers you want to quantize, and then you apply it at the end, and then you're good to go. Um, Beyond that, uh, you might want to uh, control the quantization within a layer. So for example, uh, you have a particular layer, but you want to control which weights you want to quantize, how you want to quantize it. And in that case also, it's a pretty similar API. You uh, use quantize annotate layer, but when you actually pass in the layer, you also pass in a specific config. And this config tells uh, the infrastructure how to actually quantize this layer. And uh, the rest of the API is the same. Let's look at how you define this config. So this config is largely telling us two things. One is that what is it within that layer that you want to quantize, and the other is how you want to quantize it. Uh, so you tell us which weight or which activation you want to quantize. And uh, the other thing is uh, you tell us, uh, you give us a, pass us a quantizer. And this quantizer is basically an object that encapsulates kind of the algorithm uh, about how to quantize this. We give you a bunch of built-in ones, uh, but you can write your own. Uh, you might want to quantize your own layer. So let's say you have you know, a special algorithm, like a fancy convolution layer that you write, um, and you want to quantize that as well. well you do it almost in exactly the same way. Uh, you quantize annotate your layer, you pass in a config, and this config uh, tells us how we should quantize uh, your so fancy layer. And uh, again, you tell us what to quantize, how to quantize it. And uh, in this case, what you, look, uh, what you notice is that there's like a histogram quantizer, and this is, let's say, a special quantizer. Uh, and a special quantizer is interesting because that allows you to you know, completely control uh, what sort of uh, strategy you're using to quantize your uh, model. You 
in this case, could use a histogram to determine the range and then quantize it. Um, and, and that's how you would write your algorithm. And it's pretty simple. You just uh, implement two methods. One is build, which is basically for you to construct any variables you need. And then in the call method, we give you a bunch of tensors. You quantize them, them however you wish. You return us the tensors, and we'll take care of the rest. And it doesn't uh, end here. Like uh, we actually provide you the ability to completely, you know, kind of define your own schemes, uh, specify which how each layer should be quantized, uh, going so far as to kind of, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that you know you can uh, we fuse the ReLUs for you, for example. So you can actually define your own kind of uh, transforms, which tell what sort of manipulations you want to do on the graph. Um, so, in summary, uh, quantization aware training uh, is an API which helps you recover your accuracy while gaining the benefits of quantization. It's a pretty simple API for easy tasks, but quite flexible if you want to do more complicated things. And it uh, simulates quantization loss that happens uh, on various different backends and schemes. You can kind of configure that. Um, there are cooler things coming up. Uh, we released uh, the sparsity training time API uh, some time back, but now we're working on sparse kernel execution, and that's coming up, and then you'll have like an end-to-end -end story that you can train sparse models and execute it on device. Um, and you can also use quantization and sparsity together, and that's uh, quite powerful when they, when they go together. Um, so that's the model optimization toolkit. It's a suite of tools that make your models faster and smaller. Quantization and sparsity are the main techniques that we have. Uh, you can find us on GitHub uh, slash model optimization. Please file uh, any requests, concerns, bugs, uh, feedback that you have. And we're always working on uh, making those models smaller and faster. Thank you. Oh.